Hi, Jeremy here, Modern Vitality. In today's video, we're discussing informed consent. What does this mean in terms of treatments and when you're trying to heal and you're working with health practitioners or doctors or professionals or whatever, what, what are your rights as a patient and what is informed consent? And I'm gonna give you some examples. I'm gonna tell you some stories and, and some examples that show kind of behind the curtain a little bit because for me, I've been on both sides of this as a healthcare professional and as you know, a patient, I know how this works from both sides. And I do know the temptations that healthcare professionals have when they try to make it difficult for you to know exactly what's going on with your treatment. So if you are working on healing from a complex chronic health condition like fibromyalgia or Lyme disease or mold exposure or chronic fatigue syndrome or adrenal fatigue or reactivated Epstein-Barr or long haulers or candida or anything autoimmune, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many of these out there now, this stuff is on the rise. And if you're dealing with this, you're gonna to wanna to be aware of informed consent because it will help you understand your healing path. And it will also help you not get tricked inadvertently by medical professionals who have different reasons for kind of muddying the waters, right? They have different incentives. So we wanna make sure that we're aligned to long-term healing and personal empowerment, okay? Medical independence. You need to make sure that you're ready to rise up and start taking responsibility over your own health. And that's a prerequisite, right? And informed consent helps to do that. And it takes some of the, the weight off the practitioner in terms of they don't get to make decisions for you. You are going to be consenting, right, to, to your treatment and your plan, but you're gonna take ownership of that. So in today's video, I'm gonna be getting into the details of this so we can take a deep dive so that you never, ever, ever, ever have to rely on somebody else's expert opinion and you can actually start to learn things for yourself and make your own decisions and get your life back that way. All right, let's get started. So quick story as we get into this. I'm a trained herbalist, right? Clinical herbalist, I've got a strong Eastern medicine background and herbs technically are plants, minerals, also animal products can be in there. Fungi, right? This is lumped into this category of herbal medicine. Insects, sometimes there are different insects that you can use to help heal. This is a long tr tradition of human history and how we found medicine everywhere, everywhere. So there are sometimes ethical little conundrums Right? As a practitioner, for example, if you wanna give somebody, and I've had this happen where people have come in, and I know I've spoken about this in other videos, but this is super important. It opens up the door for this whole informed consent thing. But I've had people come in, and I remember one case in particular, this guy had a horrible bone infection. He was gonna lose his finger, right? They were gonna amputate his finger because he was diabetic, and he had gotten an infection, and he had already had fingers amputated. And he said, hey, you know, I'm trying to save this finger. I said, great, come on in, let's handle it, right? So I put him on some herbs. And one of the things with the herbs is that I was using different herbs to help take out the infection and all this. And there are things that help to manage the blood sugar. And one of the herbs that I really wanted to use with him, which helps bones heal faster, is cockroaches, right? In Eastern medicine, we call it tu bie chong. It's cockroaches. Okay, cockroaches, gross, right? These things are the, the scourge. You know, you see a cockroach in a place, that means it's dirty. There's a lot of stigma attached to that. However, in my medical tradition and within my lineage, we use these to help with bone injuries. And it's really important, especially if you're worried about your finger having to get amputated. So of course, you know, I could have, I could have, because herb formulas, he, he's not gonna see all the stuff in there, right? He's not gonna be going through the powder and going, well, what's this? Because it's all, you know, I was using all powders and extracts and things. I could have just snuck it in and just giving him the thing because I know better because I'm the physician, just snuck it in and been like, listen, we need to save your finger, be quiet, drink this, right? However, I thought it was a good idea to tell him ahead of time that there were gonna be some insects in the mix, right? And to be responsible about that. And I said, listen, we're gonna use these herbs. I went through some of them with him. You know, I didn't have to go through every single plant and all that, but the cockroaches, I wanted to make sure that I was, I was very clear on this because what I don't want absolutely don't want is to try to think I'm more clever than the patient and I'm going to sneak this bug into their herbal formula. And then later he says, Hey, I'd like to see a list of the herbs I took. Right. And then I give him a list of the herbs and he looks it up and he sees that one of them was a cockroach. And now he's grossed out and he feels like a betrayal, lack of trust. Like I tricked him or something like that. Right. I never, ever, ever want to set that up where later on somebody's going to be like, what the hell? Why did you not tell me this? Okay, so anytime there's something like that, that could be potentially salient, right? That somebody could look at and go, hmm, oh, that's weird. I didn't know that, right? I wanna clear that out up front. 
We need to have that conversation openly and candidly. And in his case, I said, listen, this is important, right? We're trying to do everything we can so you can keep your finger. And this, I believe, based on other times I've used it, the literature, this long history of use tradition, the mineral content of these things, like you're gonna, you're gonna want to have this in your mix. And he was a little like, ah, bugs, I don't know. And at that point, it was important for me, I reframed it, I said, listen, do you eat peanut butter? You know, yeah, I love peanut butter. Well, you're already eating bugs. The FDA has got a limit of 30 insect parts per 100 grams of peanut butter, right? That they can be in there and they'll still stamp it as a proof for human consumption, right? Sorry if I'm ruining peanut butter for you, but it's not just peanut butter. There's bug parts in like everything. It's okay, right? You're all right. You're already eating bugs. You don't know it. So I, you know, I told him about that and he said, all right, you know, fine, whatever. Like, let's just do it. It's, it's fine. I would rather have that conversation up front, right? Because now he's on board. We've covered all the, the potential problems. I really don't want him to look up a, a list of herbs and go, hey, you never told me there was a cockroach in here, man. That's disgusting, right? No, we need to have that conversation ahead of time and clear it with him. And why? Because I respect him as a human being, that he can make his own decisions. I don't have to trick my patients. I don't have to do shell game, sleight of hand. You know, it's not like dealing with a baby. If you have a, like a baby or a pet and you have to get them to take their medicine, you know, with a dog, you wrap the pill in cheese and you're just like, here, you know, the dog doesn't know what's in the medicine, right? Or like a baby, or if you have a little kid, sometimes you have to just get the medicine in them, right? Because they don't have full agency. They're not adults. They're not consenting adults. So sometimes you have to do things to help them get their medicine, right? Of course. Now, with an adult, that's a whole different story. Why would I try to treat an adult like a child? I don't want to work with adults that act like children. I don't want to treat adults like children, right? I want to, I want to work with adults that act like adults, right? I want to work with adults that are capable of making their own health decisions. So I have to respect my patients. I can't trick them like that. Even if I know better, right? The ends do not justify the means. The process is the most important thing as we go through healing. It's a healing process. And if there's not respect within that process, and that goes both ways, by the way, me respecting my patients, of course, hey, this is what's in this formula, you know, bugs. Some people get a little squiggy about that. Let's talk about it. By the way, not everybody gets bugs. This was a, kind of a special case, you know, and I'm going to come back to the bugs and I'm going to tell you what happened with this case too, before this video's up. So you have to clear that stuff out and you have to have respect. And that goes both ways because the patients also respect the professional, right? The more respect I bring by doing a proper informed consent, then the more respect the patients have as they go through the process. And now we have mutual respect and we can walk on a journey together. This is so important, so important. For my colleagues, I know a lot of patients and people with complex chronic health conditions are watching these videos, but I also know a lot of colleagues and other practitioners watch this stuff. So somebody watching who's also a practitioner, I would encourage you to be brave here because it's difficult in the moment. You want your treatment. You know it's going to work. You hope it's going to work. You really want them to take it. Don't try to trick them so they'll take it. Have the, the courage, the bravery to actually confront the issue up front and say, listen, you know, this is, this is the best I've got for you. Don't be so afraid that they're going to reject your treatment, right? That you don't explain it to them. You owe them that because if you don't respect your patients, your patients aren't going to respect you. And that is a recipe for burnout. I'm not interested in that long-term. So there's the aside for my colleagues, right? I've been mentoring other health professionals and these kinds of topics come up a lot. It's really important. We have to have clear mental software when we're working with especially complex chronic health conditions. So this patient, we saved his finger. Hey, pretty cool, right? We we're using internal herbs. We we're using a poultice on the actual wound itself. They never had to amputate it. He was thrilled, by the way, totally flabbergasted. This is somebody who's already had other things amputated from this exact same situation with a deep bone infection. And part of it, I do believe, was because we used cockroaches, right? I was brave enough to use an herb that was a little bit kind of questionable, but also brave enough to talk to him about it in the first place so that we could have a great relationship and he knew what was going on. That's informed consent, right? And by the way, this thing with bugs, eating bugs, has become a real theme lately. There's different reasons to use bugs. I'm all for using bugs right? Eating bugs, using bugs, insects, you know, whatever you want to call them. However, what I'm not for is for globalists, people with an agenda trying to convince everybody that they need to eat bugs instead of regular food, right? That's a whole different deal. I've talked about that in a, in a separate video. You can go check that out on its own. So just because I use bugs in the clinic doesn't mean I'm an advocate of being brainwashed by people who are trying to, I don't know what they're trying to do with the world, but don't fall for that, okay? Use bugs when you need to. Anyway, 
Informed consent spills out not just to herb formulas, but also anything, anything you're doing. And what is informed consent? It means that you as the patient should understand clearly the possible advantages and the possible risks of any treatment you're doing, anything, right? And you should, you should be able to make your own decision. This is like the first step towards medical independence. The people I work with, the complex chronic folks, right? I've got an international practice. I see people from all over the world, Europe, Canada, US, Australia, wherever, right? It's very important, no matter where you are in the world, that your mindset starts to align towards long-term medical independence. What does long-term medical independence mean? It means that as time goes on, you're becoming less dependent on medicines, not more. <laughs> Okay, anybody who's had a thyroid, oh yeah, take the Synthroid or the thyroid supplementation, then you know what the opposite of medical independence is, which is medical dependence, which means the longer you're on something, the longer you're gonna keep being on it. They keep raising the dose because you're habituating, right, these kinds of things. So we wanna get our, our crutches out as best we can so that as we go on through life, we can actually become a little stronger, a little more resilient. And you have to treat your body the right way to develop this. This is something that is very important to me. It's high on my list of values is to be able to, to curate this. But one of the first steps is a mindset thing with medical independence is to become an active participant in your own care. Meaning you don't just chomp down and swallow whatever somebody in a white coat, right, recommends or prescribes. You stop, you think, you learn. There's this whole movement now in the, the mass media. Don't buy into this, right? But there's this whole movement in the mass media where they're like, don't think for yourself, just listen to the experts. We've been hearing a lot of that since about, I don't know, 2019, 2020. There's been a lot of this message of, hey, trust the experts. You don't know, right? You're not a doctor, you're not a scientist, right? But come on, if the experts aren't having common sense and the experts aren't willing to do proper disclosure of informed consent, of pros and cons, right? If they're just saying, well, do this because I said so, or do this because uh, some three-letter government agency recommends it, right? That That's not a way to empower somebody. That's how you would talk to a toddler, right? Do it because I said so. <laughs> Why? Because I said so. Why? Because I said so. Just do it, right? That's no way to have a, a, an adult-level healthcare practitioner and patient relationship. You need to be able to question the experts. You need to be able to talk and have open conversation with people who are giving you health advice or medical recommendations or anything like that. Do not stop thinking for yourself, right? And my caveat there is also upgrade the way you're thinking, okay? Because you might not be uh, an expert in pharmacology or medicine or whatever it is, but you can at least stand on a baseline of common sense. And we can learn how to start asking the right questions. That's what I mean. We can start to upgrade our thinking. We can start to learn whole systems. We can go, okay, what are the inputs? What are the uh, outputs? What are the second order consequences here? What's the long-term effects of what I'm doing? Uh, this medication, what's the exit strategy? Is there an exit strategy? Or am I gonna be on this for life? Is that the best you can do, right? Where's my medical independence here? This is how we start thinking about this stuff. So to that end, right, question people, be able to talk, be able to have conversations openly. I've got a group I maintain. It's a wonderful group. If you're dealing with a complex chronic health condition, you don't have to be alone. You can be in our group and you can ask me anything you want in there. It's wonderful. It's free to join. There's a link in the description below these videos. And if I see your application and it looks really good, I'll get you in as soon as I can. We do fill up. I keep it kind of cozy. It might be a month, might be a couple months. I, I don't know how long it'll be, but I do my best to get everybody in as soon as possible. So you can have a fair opportunity to come on in, take some time as a guest, Go through, I've got a vault of interactive videos. It'll help you learn about your health and what's going on and what your next steps need to be. You can, again, ask me anything. They're right over my shoulder as I'm working with international clients, helping them through our four-stage process to overcome complex chronic health conditions. It's awesome. I would love to see you there. So I hope this video helps you. Informed consent is extremely important. You should have a, a medical relationship based on mutual respect, which also includes respecting yourself enough to walk away from medical relationships that don't have that. Okay, very important. You got to respect yourself or other people won't either. And yeah, that's it. You know, stand up for yourself out there. It's a wild world. I hope this helps you. Let's get you feeling better. Cheers.